Go. You're going to hang out with us, watch this hoop game. Have you come to many basketball games? You come to a game a year? Well, I, I experienced a couple of FC games. I, I came to a couple of Alabama games. And I want to say, man, we have one of the best atmospheres in the country. It sounds that way. Certainly oh, yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah. Kellen, have you got a chance to talk to your new head coach? Obviously, Nick Saban retiring. Kellen DeBoer, now the head coach. Have you got a chance to connect with him yet? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, I, I, I'm big on relationships. And, uh, you know, something I try to try to do is just really get to know my new head coach. And he's done a really good job with the squad. He's bringing a good energy um, within the building. And so I'm just super happy to, to have him here. That's an energy drainer right there as the three was drained by Janai Broom. Auburn off to a 5-0 and start in conference. 16-2 and overall. Wait, Robbie, why are we playing with the lights off? They don't have a quad one win, and Jay Will was all over it. Janai Broom shoots the lights out of the building with one shot. I mean, I like that, though. I didn't know if that was done on purpose because Auburn <laughs> had the first possession. Uh, Wimp Sanderson, I, I know all about, you know, the days back then. Marto was at UAB, and Alabama was a basketball hotbed, but it, it's elevated here in the last couple of years dramatically. All right, we're starting again. we played 29 seconds, and Auburn's got a 3-0 lead. And down the floor goes Mark Sears, and Nate Oates gets a timeout call. It was pressure being applied on the double team, and that's something Auburn discussed during their shoot-around and certainly during their film sessions. Putting pressure on Sears. Talked about it with Jalen Noro. The comments from Nate Oates about his team's toughness. They're going to be challenged here. They were challenged against Tennessee. Tennessee and Auburn, the two statistically best defenses in the conference. So Sears starts all over again. Williams has Nelson, the big guy, down low right now. And Sears kicks it to Nick Pringle. And he was just stopped there by Williams. Sears had that shot blocked. We already got a feel for how Alabama's going to play on that one. The guard's going to get trapped, and they're going to force Pringle to be a playmaker. Yeah, another three misses. Pringle goes up for it, as does Chris Moore, and it was out of bounds. Here's that quote. React as a player when you see your coach saying this. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a calling card. It's saying pretty much we have the talent, but I'm not sure that we have the heart. And one thing, Ravi, you want to see on a game like today when you come back, and for a team who's played so well at home, like Alabama, is you get smacked and beat up by Tennessee on the road, you come back home and you defend the home court. Yeah. And that's how you stay in contention in the tough conference like the SEC. All right, we saw Auburn with full court pressure. The ball was originally ruled Auburn. They turned it back to Alabama. And Sears now has some freedom. He penetrates, and then he kicks it. Estrada's been terrific, and that's a bad pass. Three on one. Holloway, the freshman, short on a three. They had a three-on-one, settle for the three. They're a good three-point shooting team, but they come up empty. Alabama in that game against Tennessee had 22 turnovers. Taking yeah. care of the rock, that's another turnover right there. That's a walk. Nate Oates talked about that today. He's like, guys, when we're loose with the ball, we're not going to have the best probability to win games. We have to be sharp, we have to be tight, and we have to play fast. Pringle had five. Sears had seven in the Tennessee game. Pringle doesn't start tonight. Sears obviously in, but turnovers killed him against Tennessee, and they're hurting him early. Good pass. Really good look. There's wow. a foul, and Broom has got all five points for Auburn. He goes to the free throw line to finish the three-point play. You know, a lot of people talk about Aiden Holloway and how he has his ups and downs scoring the rock, but this dude has close to a four-to-one assist to turnover ratio. Look how he comes off the screen, and look how he throws a dime with the left hand right in the pocket for Janai Broom to go up, and that's what you're taught. You create the contact. You get an and one, and you try to finish the three-point play. Janai Broom is a 61% free-throw shooter, but so far, every thought, shot he's put up tonight has gone in. A three-pointer, a two-pointer, and a free-throw at 6 nothing. Such a big opportunity for Alabama. They have not been the top 30 team this season. Overall, they're 1-5 versus top 40 opponents with their only win versus Mississippi State on the road. Ball fake. And Reitzel. Tough two. Misses. It was a two at the rim, and they liked the threes and the twos at the rim, but he pulled up and came up short. Holloway, the freshman, was an eighth grader when Jared Harper and the 2019 Tigers went to the final four. He watched that. He wanted to be a part of it. Well, Alabama, it all starts on the defensive end, man. I mean, they have to play with a sense of urgency, and I think their defense 
trying to get easy buckets and transition off of their defense, Ravi. Building that lather helps you then settle into the three-point shots, considering that 48% of their shot attempts come from the three-point yep. line. Yep. 48%. First substitution of the game, and there will be plenty. Chad Baker Mazzara, he wears 10, continues to grow. He puts some muscle on. They think he's got a chance to be a star at the next level. Broom, that pass picked off by Sears. He drives it and kisses it off the window over Mazzara. What did we just talk about? Creating offense off of your defense. Doesn't sound like a tennis match in here right now. Nowhere close to that, Ravi. All the way. Oh, Great oh, pass! Oh, oh my woo. goodness! Eyes in the back of his head to find Broom. The 360 spin and a delivery. Drew a double and he nailed it. Estrada spinning, and he will kick it to Nelson. They want him to do that more, and he just overshot the front of the iron, kicked it off the back, and another miss in close. I'm going to see Grant Nelson go to the rack and dunk that. I'm going to need a finger roll. Another turnover for Auburn. Sears drives with his right. That's, okay, that's a goal, Ted. It hit the window. Williams will get called. But how about the passes from Aiden Holloway, the freshman out of North Carolina? I mean, look at that. He sees Janai Broom on his right side, turns his whole body around, delivers it with the dazzle. I mean, you saw a pass with the left hand that was a dime, and now you see this one. It even has KD Johnson up, <laughs> giving the high step. Early candidate number one play of the day and night right there from Aiden Holloway. Robbie, shout out to Alabama basketball fans. They showed up today. We got an environment. Let's get it. A.D. Johnson into the game, and he will pull up. And he'll knock it down. Off and off to a good start shooting. A.D. Johnson from the field this year, shooting about 40%. He's a senior. There's a corner three. That's too strong. And a rebound. Ripped down by the Auburn Tigers, Chaney Johnson. In the guard play with Alabama, you think about Aiden Holloway, Katie, Katie Johnson, Trey Donaldson, all of them take care of the Rock. There's a reason why they are top ten in the nation in fewest turnovers per game. Mazzara has inches. He goes behind his back against Sears. Then he pulls up and he knocks down one. He was 6'8". I mean, look, I, as a smaller guard, I felt that all the time. If you're 6'2 and the guy is 6'8", he can just pull up over the top of you. Stevenson with a flush and a good pass from Sears. Aaron Stevenson's a freshman at 6'11", 207. There's an issue with the other backboard. The shot clock light is still on. Not sure what that's about. Room spins. Baseline too strong there as he lays it up and in. And they're going to recognize that light is on the backboard. Don Daly just saw it. You were all over it after the ball went through the bucket. So another... Another lighting issue here at Coleman tonight. Hey, look, we got some issues, but we don't have back. Way through it. Auburn has been on fire to start this game. Bruce Pearl's team, six of eight. They have made five of their last five, which is why they have an eight-point lead. And coming off a season high, 58% field goal shooting performance against Ole Miss. Substitutes in the game. Ryland Griffin now on the floor for Alabama. And another hard drive by Sears. He went right by the backup point guard. For Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers, that's Trey Donovan. He's got the ball now. Holloway takes a seat. That's what's so good about Alabama's offense. They can knock down the three, but it opens up lanes to drive and get into those gaps. A.D. Johnson went baseline. Here's the bounce pass down low. That's a flush, and this is a terrific story. Dylan Cardwell having an outstanding season. I mean, when I look at Dylan Cardwell, his body reminds me of like a young Ron Artest. He's done a lot of hard work on his body. Now he's got a mismatch with Sears. This is what Bruce Pearl does love about him. He can guard people on the perimeter. He can switch him one through five. Griffin knocks down a big three coming off a game in which he struggled against Tennessee. That's a huge shot. They shoot so much better inside Coleman Coliseum than they do on the road, and that's important for Griffin. Mazzara right off of his foot, says Don Daly, and that's a turnover for Auburn. 
It's going to allow triple drive penetration. Sears so good at getting into those gaps. Gets a little lucky there on the deflection, but still Griffin able to be a recipient knocking down that three. Griffin shooting 36% from three. The sophomore of Dallas, Texas. Two games ago went for 21 against Tennessee, seven points and five turnovers. Almost, Robbie, if they get into the gaps, you want them to finish over the top of, the, of your big stay-at-home on the three-point shooters. You know, Watch that it. And replaces what they do. Oh, boy, Griffin's two for two. That was even further out. Maybe he's got another 20-plus performance in him tonight. They pulled within two. Griffin always gives you good defense. Mozara, Cardwell in the paint. Lost it, threw it away. Their fourth turnover. And Bruce Pearl trying to calm everybody down on the sideline. Well, Auburn's defense is second in forcing turnovers, and they take some gambles sometimes, but it's going to test the discipline of Auburn to chase shooters and run them off the three-point line. If you lose them, that's where they knock it down to gain momentum. The fact that Griffin was so far away with that shot. Nate Oates is good with it. The further away the shooter is, the more open the floor is for everybody else. Kick corner, three. Oh. Count it, they've hit their last three. And that's Latrell Weitzel. And this crowd is going bonkers. Look at the ball pressure. Wow. Williams. That shot was blocked. We got a run out. Weitzel and Griffin. Missed with a left, and he had Griffin wide open in the corner for a three. Didn't see him. That's going to be a foul. KD Johnson drew it. You see, once again, in transition, he's so good utilizing the ball fake. Teddy Johnson didn't stay down and, and that's how they get you moving side to side. They get you running, chasing them off the three-point line. If you don't contest by staying on the ground and be disciplined, they're able to get into those gaps and run around you. KD Johnson getting right into it with some of the Alabama players and they had to be separated. It was Johnson who hit the ground hard. See he and Waggy. Sears is also showing a lot more energy. Maybe I this mean, is a response to the comments from Oates. This is basketball to me. KD is a fiery, fiery player. Yeah. And, and, and Ravi, people talk in basketball. You're allowed to talk and respond and get yourself going. It's a horror foul, but it's a, it's a rivalry basketball game. Intensity's high. Now, if Waggy was tripping off at the mouth and KD wanted to respond, I'm okay with that. You give a warning to both sides, you move on. Robert inbounds, Mazzara to the hole, lays it up and lays it in. The continued improvement of Chad Baker Mazzara for Auburn is a story for them. He averages almost 10 points a game, 20 minutes he gets off the bench. And this is one of those games where if you're playing well, you're likely to get more minutes. Auburn's competition so far has not been of the Alabama ilk. Griffin again. Oh, he's three for three. No hesitation. Auburn's going to have to go out and guard him further away from the basket. Mazzara pulls up. That's too strong. And they got a two-on-one. Foul underneath from KD Johnson. Mohamed Diabate is going to go to the line. Listen to the place. Auburn shooting almost 70%. Both those guys, best players in the world. Um, and, and, you know, for that to come true is, is remarkable. But, um, no, a lot of text and a lot of thank yous, but um, they're very, very fortunate. And Nick, is it different for you? Because, you know, last year being in the crowd, now sitting courtside, <laughs> just dealing with, uh, you know, that dynamic and how much has changed very quickly? No, this is uh, this is awesome. I've always I've always kind of wondered how all this works. So it's, it's pretty cool to see it. But um, no, just to, to see this game firsthand and, and to be on the court is uh, 
And to see how big these guys are. Like, you know, I, I see them around, but actually to see them on the court and how small they actually make the court look is... Welcome uh, to my life, man. That is pretty cool. Uh, and lastly, you know, you have the opportunity to turn pro. You can stay an amateur. You didn't take the prize money. You get a two-year exemption. You're going to play in three majors regardless of the decision. What are some of the considerations that you're going through to decide whether to turn professional or stay a, a college student and play golf here? Um, I think a lot goes into it, and, and, and partially, uh, you know, my, obviously my family, and um, that's a decision that, you know, we kind of have to all, uh, they all have, a, they all have an opinion on that, and then obviously my teammates and my coach, and, um, you know, that's something that we all have to kind of discuss, and, you know, whether that's the best for me or, or you know, my teammates. You're still and, discussing? A little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of prize money, Nick. It's a lot of prize money. <laughs> it is. Just saying. Just, just to honestly, just to have the opportunity to, to you know, stay amateur and, and be able to play in those events or turn professional and, and chase my dream is, uh, that's awesome. is, uh, is remarkable and, and something that I'll never take for granted. Best of luck. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Quite a story. Really Thank you so much. That. That's Nick Dunlap. Thanks. Youngest since 1910 to win a PGA Tour event. Alabama's on a 14-2 run. Williams fires. That's too strong. And a battle for the rebound. We're going to keep it here. And a foul called against Alabama. Denver Jones into the game. He came in and got pushed from behind. Leor Berman, 24, also on the floor for Auburn. You know, Rowdy, Auburn is second in the SEC in three-point field goal percentage defense, allowing opponents to only shoot 29% from behind the arc this season. So far in this game, you think about Bama shooting 67% from the three-point line. And when you space out the floor like that with shooters, it leaves a lot of open off pick and rolls for your bigs to get rolls to the rim. So it's been two high-efficient twos and high-efficient threes yeah. for Bama's offense thus far. And Jay Will, Auburn made four threes in the game against Tennessee. The game. They have four threes already in this one against Auburn. And they can't that. stop him. Broom has been the guy scoring for Auburn as he puts in another one into double figures now. He's got 12. Oh, I love that for Jenna Broom. If they're, if they're going to put Grant Nelson on him, Grant Nelson does not have the bulk and great patience there by Broom just to back him down patiently. Griffin again. Oh, oh wow. Four for four. What a night for Ryland Griffin. We're only halfway through the first half. He's got a dozen. Holloway looking for contact. Broom picks up the offensive rebound. No. Second chance, no. Third chance, yes. Janai Broom, 6'10", 240 out of Plant City, Florida. Really difficult shot there on a spin move by Jaron Stevenson. Auburn's going to have the advantage on the glass. Broom, Cartwell, company, Williams. Holloway left his feet again. Broom ends up with it and missed that shot. It worked once. It didn't work the second time for Aiden Holloway. Nelson penetrates. He's in the paint. That's where they want him. Fires it up just a little short. Nate Oates remembering a, his first basket. Ball fake slam dunk. They want to see more of that from Grant Nelson, the senior out of Devil's Lake, North Dakota. No need for him to shy away from the contact. Actually embrace it. Got the player up in the air. Should have cracked into him. Only averaging four free throw attempts per game for Grant Nelson. Should be a lot more. Holloway, good, good three-point shooter. That is in and out. Holloway makes about 35% of his threes. Nelson launches. That's way off to the left. Don't be surprised by Alabama shooting quickly. They like to get it off about eight seconds after the possession starts. They have a rule. If they don't shoot within eight, they consider it almost a turnover. Floater too strong for Williams. Really good rebound by Griffin in traffic. That's how Alabama could be effective in this game. The guards need the gang rebound to lead to a lot of transition buckets. Nelson has it. Three Estrada. That's off to the left. Really, really good block out by Denver Jones on Grant Nelson. Now, Auburn's forced to issue a couple of times. One of the advantages they have is Deny Broom. They should just run a post up and an ISO against him and Nelson down low on the block. 
That ball was deflected. Actually, Nelson had to go off his fingertips, but it went through in a bucket for Denver Jones to transfer out of Florida International University. Rob M. the pace of this game, you see Auburn sucking win. I mean, they're a tire. We'll take a timeout. 7-14 to go. Wild first half. Griffin's got four threes already. A one point. Between Tennessee, Auburn, Kentucky, South Carolina, though, with a win last night. That middle, do they rise? Do they fall? I mean, I, I think you're talking about Kentucky? I'm talking about the middle of the conference. Who I else think, joins them at the top? I think Alabama has a legit chance to join them at the top, but they're defending with a sense of urgency. Look, I, I think they have one of the highest ceilings in the SEC with their ability to knock down threes. Sears in a race with Johnson. They lost it. It's out of bounds off Auburn. A lot of Alabama's issues come with taking care of the ball and also defending the rim. But what you've seen so far in this first half is them knocking down shots at a high clip. Rylan Griffin has been absolutely incredible. 4-4 from the three-point line. And it still blows my mind how Auburn has just continued to lose him and a lot of simple switch actions. Statistically, one of their best three-point shooters, Sam Walters, who wears 24, is into the game. But this lineup here can really stretch you with Griffin, Sears, and Walters. Griffin thinks about another. Uh, in and out. Loose ball picked up, and they get an opportunity, and there's going to be a foul called against Auburn. It's about the fourth time that I've seen an Alabama player utilize a head fake and I've seen an Auburn player fly by yeah I mean you gotta you gotta contest and be down stay down Ryan Griffin is seeing an enormous basket that foul was on KD Johnson Alabama has done an unbelievable job now controlling the basketball turnovers to start haven't had one in a dozen minutes and that time Sears with the right missed it off the window give, give Dylan pass Harbaugh here. a lot of credit there though by 6'10", defending the perimeter like that. Johnson does turn it over. Playing a little too quick right now is KD Johnson. Six turnovers for the Tigers. This is a high-intensity game. You can just feel it. I mean, everything about it is what college basketball is. You have two teams that are vying for a quality win his quad one wins go a long way. And right now we get a chance to see if Auburn really is the team that we think they are. And Alabama, a team that has potential but hasn't hit that yet. 100%. Women's basketball matchup of the night tomorrow, a Eastern 5 Pacific on ESPN and the app. It, it doesn't get much better. The only undefeated team in the nation is South Carolina. Angel Reese and number nine, LSU. The game day crew will tip off our coverage at 7 Eastern time. Six-minute mark, Mazzara, really difficult. Fade away three from the corner. Ball kept alive, Sears pushing. He's got Griffin in the corner. Got fouled. He did get fouled on the arm, and they missed it. Back the other way. Katie Johnson, another turnover. Seventh of the game for Auburn. Walters will pull up. Another one in and out. Foul on the floor called against Auburn. When you think about Alabama, you think about the speed, and within eight seconds or less, you think that should play into the hands of Auburn due to their depth, considering they play 11 to 12 guys. But what I'm seeing thus far is multiple Auburn players have their hands on their knees right now. The pace of the game is literally knocking the wind out of the sail for the Tigers. A couple of days ago, the Auburn players will tell you they had the hardest practice they've had since June. They knew the pace of play that was going to be displayed here by Alabama and they ran and ran and ran that's too easy easy inbounds pass that breaks an 0 for 8 drought for Alabama the ball put in by Muhammad Wagi Sears gets a break here they're going to get a foul it looks like it's going to be on Estrada and it is now look at this inbound pass, Ravi. There's no way you should be able to make an easy pass right underneath the rim. You're seeing Carwell try to be live, but that left foot has to be more on the baseline. You're making a pass right underneath the rim. You want to funnel the ball out, if anything, close that off. No way you should be able to get an easy lay-in off that. 
Sears and Griffin, both on the bench for Alabama. Sears has been terrific with his assists, and Griffin's been the story scoring-wise. He sits with 12. Johnson in traffic. Oh. That's a tough shot fading away. What a step through by Katie Johnson. He just plays at a different speed. Call him the man of many faces and the energy booster off the bench. Augie down low. Had that ball ripped away by Mazzara. One on one with Walters. No good. Offensive rebound ripped away. Transition defense is so critical for Auburn. You got to get out. And Walters, Walters corner three. Too strong. Rebound Estrada. Blocked at the rim. E.D. Johnson has it. They keep Sears and Griffin on the bench through the four minute TV timeout. Johnson. That's right. Stevenson. Stevenson launches. That's good. That's a three. Auburn 6-3 of the first half. And Auburn will get the timeout. There's a little confusion whether they wanted to call one or not. Baker Mazzaro looked at the official. Baby Burdett and they got it. Crimson Tide. Close to Aaron. Ravi and Jay will see you at the half. All right, KC, to Josh's point, you see what they did against Tennessee, 4 of 21. So they died by it. And tonight, making nearly half of their three, 6 of 13. And six of the last eight made field goals have been threes. Mazzara, pull up two, missed, followed it. And it is Alabama basketball. Sears and Griffin back in. He's 4 of 5. This time he takes it to the paint. He was met there. And we're going to get a foul call. Looked like Williams had a lot of ball. Think about some of the close games that Bama's been in. They've been right there throughout the time. Purdue being a close game. Arizona, they just couldn't make a three-point shot to save their lives. If they had made ten threes in that game, I truly believe they would have won. But once again, like Seth said in the studio, when you run them off the three-point line, your bigs also need to be back to protect the rim. Because if they get you leaning one way or the other, all these guards are so skilled. They can shoot, they can pass, and they can attack you downhill. All of them. Griffin, 80% free throw shooter. Knocks down both. Wyland so Griffin having a 14 point first half. On the other side, Chennai Broom has got 14 points. But it feels like he hasn't had the ball in about 10 minutes. You know, I've done multiple Auburn games, Robbie, and when they make it a priority to feed the beast down low and deny Broom, preseason SEC first team player, he delivers. But at times, they get a little shot happy, and they forget he's on the court. Yeah. And if I were Auburn, I would continue to play inside out and utilize deny Broom, especially with this matchup against Grant Nelson. Right, so picked up that foul. Each team now has five, as we have 3.20 to play. They do isolate Broom on the baseline. He spins to his left. That's no good. He'll get another chance. Fire it up too strong again. And Sears, the guard in traffic, rips it down. To your point, Broom had gone six minutes without a shot. There's a three. And Reitzel is a 43% three-point field goal shooter. Largest lead of the night for Alabama. Shot blocks. Holloway. Broom. Griffin. No foul called either way. Give him two. He's got 16. Sears pushes it the other way. A wow. foul on Mazzara. And then Sears threw the basketball at his feet. I mean, is there a pace in this game or what? Is there some animosity and some hostility? How chippy these games to be. And one can make the case the refs are trying to keep this under a little sure. more leniency. You're looking for give some on this one. Free throw is made by Baker Mazzara. And again, 
We got 2.30 to go in the first half. You see if the technical foul free throw shots are the difference in the game. Two point game when it's all said and done. That last name, Mazzara, familiar to sports fans, Chad Baker Mazzara's cousin, Nomar Mazzara. He's from the Dominican Republic. Nomar, of course, played parts of seven years at the major leagues and was a 20 home run guy his first three seasons. In the Dominican Republic, everybody tries to play baseball, but his family plays basketball, and he wants to be a pro. Nelson using that body. That's, That's much better to. by Grant Nelson. A 6'10 frame. You want to see him be physical and initiate the contact instead of the other way around. Preseason first team all SEC. Nelson Williams with three. Comes up short. Bodies are banging and it's Alabama. Comes away with it. Jalen Wilson, Jalen Williams, excuse me, been shooting over 40%. It's an 11-game win streak for Auburn. He's got two open looks. He hasn't been able to knock it down. Sears will. That ball blocked by Broom. He picks it up. Lays it up and in. Great job by Sears to follow the block. The SEC's leading scorer this season. Four of seven from the floor. And this crowd loves a nine-point lead. Williams again. That's off. And Williams' three-point shot not falling tonight. 45% three-point field goal shooter. Griffin to the hole. Short. Hit the ground hard. Sears battles. And they got numbers. Wade and Holloway got some separation. Too strong. Auburn nightmare is shooting from three. One of 11. Sears pushing off of that right arm a little bit. Reitzel buries it. Eighth three of the first half for Alabama. And a 12-point lead. Largest of the night. Sears with a rip from the freshman Holloway. Takes it, lays it up, and in. And Aiden Holloway has no air to breathe. The building is exploded, That's and Holloway gets pushed. That's a foul against Alabama. Bob Adams called it. And first off, it starts with Grant Nelson, like I said, being strong, playing through contact down low, and then off the block shot by Janai Broom. Alabama really staying with it. Sears finishing at the rim. And then just a kick out here and really not seeing the sense of urgency. What a pass by Sears. Nobody getting out there to stop the three-point shooter. Alabama on the roll. Yeah, Bruce Perron has told everybody, including us this morning, we haven't faced adversity. The metrics say we're better than I think we are. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves tonight. And right now they're learning that they're 14 points down to Alabama, and they'll have the final shot going into the break. Bad pass. They may not get the final shot, or maybe they do. In and out. Reitzel had a chance. We'll go to the break with Alabama up and this place on fire. I mean, this is no tennis match, Ravi. I don't care. <laughs> in wins, they shoot 45% from the three-point line and then make 12 three-point field goals. They have eight main three-point field goals and he's shooting 47% from the three-point line in the first half. All right, so play deeper. Get out there on them. How about offensively? Should they slow things down if you're Auburn? Take the air out of the ball if you can you need high quality shots and you need to control the tempo of the game you do that by your defense first off getting them off the three-point line being more physical but also offensively you don't need to come down past one time and shoot the rock right so run your offense in and out rebounding traffic by williams and also start banging the ball down low if you're open give them the ball right there they don't the three good and that's a important starter Randy Johnson. Check that Denver Jones. However, the ball goes in, right? And so everybody's going to say, well, that's a good shot. But actually, tonight Broom had his player deep on the post. 
I think Auburn needs to get back to giving him the ball down low. Estrada did not have a big scoring half. It was Griffin with all of his threes, four of six. And Sears played terrific as well. He penetrates, and that's a turnover. He got stuck with two men on him. Jones, left hand, gets it to go. No foul called. You had a foul called. The officials did not. So a quick start for Auburn out of the halftime. Auburn's bench, the story of the entire season. Outscored 21-12 in the first half. Good take by Sears. That ball was deflected at the rim, and the follow-up by Pringle doesn't go. Now reward the big. He'll shoot it again. That's too strong. It's okay. I like that shot. Transition. I still think you got to attack the rim. Ryland Griffin at the scorer's table. He was the difference in the first half. Reverse, no. Rebound, no. And Alabama 0 for 4 to start this half. By the way, it follows. Jones will launch again. That's off to the left. Well, they were one for ten in the first half. They made their first and have subsequently missed three in a row. Well, the first is with the lights off. I'm going to tell you right now, Janai Broom has run, sprinted down the court three possessions in a row and did not even see a look. As a big, he's going to stop doing that if he's not going to be rewarded. Estrada corner three, too short. Holloway there sees Broom. There you go. Just I mean, what you asked for. Robbie, he's done it three times. Alabama timeout, Jay. You don't have to get into a three-point shooting contest with Alabama. Sometimes got 18. Sometimes you need. If you want to go over to the SEC network, it looks like this. It's 6 and 8.30. Ole Miss and AM, the nightcap. The volunteers of Tennessee will be in Tennessee, but this time in Nashville to take on Vanderbilt. ESPN SEC, college hoop all day as we move further into the college basketball season. See, Ravi, who do you think is the best guard in the country? If you put Dalton Connect in that category, right. him and R.J. Davis yeah. of North Carolina, who would you get the best guard in the country to? That's a good question. Connect, just feel, he, Connect is a professional basketball player playing a college game. He's physically stronger. So I'd say Dalton Connect, but I've also seen him more in person than I've seen RJ. And RJ can take a game over. He did a Carolina game earlier, and he's outstanding. There's Griffin. He's back in. He comes up short. It's a fallaway three. Room with a rebound. I have to say that Tennessee probably the best team in the SEC right now with the way they play, the physicality. Ziegler as well, coming off the ACL, the way he defends, it's just, it's incredibly impressive what Rick Barnes has been able to do. Twice oh, they've gone to Broome, go. twice he has thrown it through, and that timeout didn't slow him down. He's got 20. Rather, you know what we're talking about here, man. I mean, from two people that have seen a lot of basketball, you don't need to compete with them on the three-point line when you got a guy like Broome who is giving you an available target every possession. Extending their defense against Griffin. A lot of one on one. He takes it in, holds himself up, can't get it to go. Another rebound rip for Broom. Mazzara, three, no good, and nobody underneath to grab a rebound. And Jones on Mate. Griffin has Williams on him. Nelson, not a good shot from three. It's an air ball. Shot clock hasn't reset. They'll have ten. And a mismatch here. Nelson to the hole. Wraparound pass. They got four to shoot it. Nelson with a good and a dunk and a foul. What did we say, Ravi, in the first half? He had a drive, and he tried to finger roll it. And I yelled, dunk that! For the G League Elite Camp, he got an invite to the NBA Draft Combine, and he was likely going to be a second-round pick. So rather than take that option, he came back, tried to increase his stock, maybe be a first-round pick. That's a smart option. Yep, the right decision to do. And I don't mind kids testing the waters, by the way. It's a great experience for them to see how pros train and to gain that experience to come back to college ball. Lead was 14 at the break. It's down to 8. And Masara had that, and he took his eyes off it. 
And Donaldson's pass went out of bounds. That's turnover number 10 for Auburn. Maybe a little more baseball as a kid in the Dominican. You hold on to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to stick to the mitt. I mean, that's been a difference so far here in the second half. Auburn hasn't thrown the ball over. And they've been their aggressor on defense. Yeah, and they were the aggressor there. Stevenson gets called for the foul. Janie Johnson inserted himself into that pass, and that's a turnover. NBA Wednesday it is 9.30 Eastern time tonight. Thunder Spurs. That will follow right here on ESPN. Right by Nyana chance for people to see. Back cut there. Pretty blocked at the rim. Stevenson returned the favor on Johnson. How can they turn it into points? Nelson hard. There was some contact. Johnson picks up the foul. And you can see Grant Nelson a lot more aggressive going to the basket. Also, defensively for Alabama, rim protection is a critical thing. Great backdoor cut here. He goes up for the slam, and he just goes up and beats him right there. He lost it. But still, you have to contest, right? And on the opposite end, watching Grant Nelson not settling for the three. Hasn't made a shot from the outside thus far in this game. But that's what Nate Oates wants to see from him. Attack the rim. Get to the free throw line. A highly touted transfer. And again, a preseason first team, all SEC. We've talked about Dalton Connect and what he's done at Tennessee. He wasn't a first or second team preseason all SEC. And Nelson only averaging four free throw attempts yeah. per game. He should be at seven, eight, nine easily with his size and his frame. He's got five points in the lead, ten for Alabama. Again, a huge game for both teams. Alabama off that loss to Tennessee. Oates questions what his team is made of. And for Auburn, Bruce Pearl's team, the only unbeaten still in the SEC at 5-0 and 16-2 and and overall with zero quad one wins. People at home wonder if quad one win. You get it against a team that's the top 40 in the net or when a team plays on the road against the top 75 net ranked team. And that certainly meets both of those qualifications tonight. You know, the beautiful thing about playing in a league so powerful as the SEC is you're going to get quad yes. one opportunities. I think the big thing for Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide is taking advantage of those opportunities. There have been so many games they've been in. Yep. They just haven't been able to finish the deal. That's right. And led. That's a good point. Auburn is on an 11-game win streak into this game. Mazzara one-on-one with Griffin. Tries to go to the hole. Sears from behind. Took a whack at it. Nate Oates said it wasn't on Sears, and in fact it wasn't. They called Griffin with the foul. Be interesting to see if Ryland Griffin can get that mojo going again here in the second half after missing the last couple of shots. He was so dynamite in the first half. Hitting his first four threes. That's been the calling card for Auburn. They beat you up with their depth and their bench. The bench of Alabama dominated in the first half. Pretty patient play by Broom. That boy good. Yeah, Johnson got good. up to deflect it. Yeah, Broom is 22 points tonight. 10 of 14. And he's got nine rebounds. So he's moving towards double-double number 54. He just sweeps up the mess all the time. You know, it's when you need a quality possession, running some action to get him down the block, and also the patience and the, the footwork. I mean, just reverse pivot, multiple pivots, can find a way to get a rim and, or an angle at the rim. Foul on the floor against Baker and Mazzara. The good news for Alabama, Griffin ended up after the whistle shooting a three, and it went through the net. That's that's just see it go in. Yes, yeah, see yeah. it go in. <laughs> and Robbie also for Janai Broom. Five blocks Five on blocks. the day. Got 39 on the season at 34 coming in. He, he, could, he could look at a triple double if he gets into a block party. Good hands by Nelson, but then he walked. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama's 10th turnover. Okay, Auburn usually fouls a lot. Alabama gets to the free throw line a lot. It's for all the chippiness. It's been a relatively whistle-free game so far. Alabama needs to get back to pressuring the perimeter. They created a lot of havoc and turnovers in the first half with ball pressure. 
A.D. Johnson, one-on-one -on -one again against Griffin. Drives. Donaldson corner. Three, got it! Okay, Trey Donaldson is so big off the bench. He's almost a 50-40-90 guy with his ability to knock down free throws and also knock down a three-point shot. Sears foul. They're going to get K.D. Johnson with that. Donaldson's a 6'3 sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. And that's what you want to see. Off the K.D. drive, weak side, drift baseline, hands ready. Donaldson able to knock down that three. And one of the qualities people don't talk about Donaldson as well, along with Holloway, both guys are around a 3-1 to one assist to turnover yes, ratio. he averages more assists than Holloway. Yeah, right. taking care of the rock with your backboard, that's critical. Auburn U has had so many great guards under Bruce Pearl. Right so, oh, Cardwell from behind with a block. Katie Johnson hard to the hole. There is only a green light for KD Johnson. No yellow, no red. Sears turn. Cardwell banged him, no foul called. Got him with the body. By the way, Cardwell's near presence was enough to make Sears shift his shot. A 7-0-1, too strong. Cardwell rip, Johnson free. No good. Look how active he is, man. Griffin stepped in front of Donaldson, and we got a breakout. Johnson Ooh. went up on a block by KD Johnson at the rim. Oh, but a quieter. The three from Reitzel. Everybody sees green light tonight. I mean, come on. This is basketball. Are you not impressed? Donaldson down low. Williams away from the basket. No. Jalen Williams with a donut in this game thus far. Bad pass by Sears. Left his feet. and He left Nelson out to dry. Leor Berman in. Throws it up. No good. Rebound. But back up and in by Williams. That's how Williams is going to need to be re-engaged in this game. Sometimes when the shot isn't going down from the outside, do some of the dirty work and get it off the glass. Great take by Sears. He blew right by Berman. He lays that up and in. And Sears now with 12. Everybody is doubled over. You can see him bend. Donaldson. Oh, he banks it in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Trey Donaldson did not call glass. Great recover by Caldwell. Sears puts it up. That's good. Sears to 15. And both teams are seeing big, big buckets. If you're Lior Borman, if you're Berman, if you're out there, you gotta have active hands. Your hands can't be down when you're going against Sears. They're giving him free sight at the rim. The crowd has been on its feet for the last five minutes. KD Johnson, a lot of dribbling. Griffin blocked it. And that's going to be a foul on Cardwell as Nelson goes to the floor. K.D. Johnson dribbled himself right into a shot block. Well, if you want, you got to push up on him and force him to be a tough two-point shooter. The second half of Sears, he's 7 of 13 from the floor in the game. He's up to 15 points. Griffin's still there with 14. Reitzel's got 12. He's been impressive as well. On the other side, it's the Jani Broom Show, 22 points. Really good game. And as you see, Alabama. One of 13 to start, three of three since. Two of those have been three-point field goals. Six-point game, 11 to go in the second half. And a big game for both of these teams. Sam Walters into the game for Alabama. Estrada also on the floor, 0 for 5. And Cardwell out there, wow. Garden Sears. You can't take that shot over him because Carwell has the length. Griffin back shooting. That's one off to the right. Give it back. Give it back. Three. Donaldson wants it. Go. He launches. Around and out. And we're going to keep it here. They're going to get Pringle for holding Cardwell. Fairly quiet night for Pringle with just two points. He's taken only two shots. 
He's up against Cardwell. Step back, no good. Another offensive rebound picked up, and Donaldson. Cardwell calls for a high screen, which he then gets. They had the switch. And Donaldson, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Kick corner three. It's good. Found Chris Moore in the corner, and a three pulls him within three. Good job right there by Donaldson, not settling for a contested three, but getting into that lane and creating a shot for Moore. Contested three, Walters way short. Give Cardwell credit. He came out and got a hand in his face. Walters is out of the game immediately. Great job by Donaldson right here. Not settling, but getting into that lane and then Moore being a recipient. And that angle didn't show, but Moore's hands were ready to catch that pass from the beginning. I can't tell you how many times when you see shooters on the perimeter rally, their hands are down. Yeah. Moore's hands were ready, providing a target. This way, when that pass came into the slot, he was ready to release it. Baker Mazzara and Katie Johnson on the bench in the ear of Chris Moore, telling him, shoot more when you get it. Great recovery by Alabama. Jones goes with eight on the shot clock. And there's a foul against Alabama. He'll be shooting two. Foul on Estrada. Well, that's, a, that's a better move by Denver Jones, right? Like, as a bailout, when you... Because I don't think that was a foul. I think that should have been a no call. Because Jones was the one that jumped into the defensive play. Denver Jones is the transfer from Florida International. As he knocks down the free throw. First team all-conference last year in Conference USA. Well, this is the game of the year in the SEC. Live from Baton Rouge with college game day to kick things off at 7. And then it's the unbeaten Carolina women against Reese Witherspoon. Or Reese, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Reese Witherspoon I love play basketball. Club. It's a great book club, exactly. <laughs> Angel Reese. What are you thinking LSU. about, Robbie? What are we thinking about? Reading books. There's a pick. <laughs> Right off Estrada, Donaldson throws it down. Last Auburn lead was 18-17. Now it's 58-57. Really impressive comeback after being down 14 at the half. Sears hard to the hole, deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Auburn. Cardwell got his hand on it. Well, not only do the players on the court have to be agile, but look at the ball go right there. She got the heck out of the way so quickly. A great defensive intensity by Donaldson to lock down in the stance and to strip that ball. You know, at the beginning of the year, there was so much talk around Aiden Holloway, Trey Donaldson, Denver Jones, Katie Johnson about who's going to start. And I've often said, I don't care who starts. I want to know who's on the court at the end of the game when it's time to close. Yep. I think Bruce has really leaned into that with who his quality players will be defensively on the court to close games. Rick Barnes, too, in Tennessee, always makes the point. It's not necessarily who starts. It's who's on the floor at the end of the game. They got a foul on Cardwell underneath as he and Pringle were tied up. Look at his 10 players averaging 15-plus minutes per game. No national champion. And the last 25 seasons had 10 plus players averaging 15 minutes per game. There was one team in 2000 that had 10 players that averaged 10 minutes per game or more. And that was the Michigan State Spartans. Sears with a chance for a three point play. Flexing on the ground right underneath Jalen Williams, who clears the area. Good take there by Sears. Williams change and Moore speed were right there. there. Yeah, yeah, but that little change of speed. So many players just want to throttle the ball at 1,000 miles per hour. He slows himself down, allows the defense to back away a little bit, and then re-engages. And that's how you throw the defense off, with off-speed movement. Estrada getting some assistance behind the bench. And Sears will go for his 18th point of the night. Knocks it down. The SEC's leading scorer at just under 20 a game.
sits at 18, and the crowd re-engaged and on their feet. They're going to get Pringle. That is the fourth foul on Nick Pringle. Well, Pringle went just wide. If he didn't reach him with his hands, they wouldn't have called that a foul. And I get he's trying to be active to strip the ball, but those are some critical possessions for the job he's been doing defensively. you got to just show hard and get back to your man. Muhammad Wagi out into the game, number 11 for Alabama. 8.36 to go, tied up two. Double team Jones. Now they back off. Cardwell finds Williams at the free throw line. Throws it up with his left, and that's pretty. That's a veteran play by Jalen Williams. Jay Will loves going over that right shoulder, and when he gets to his sweet spot, it's really difficult to stop offensively. Five times during this 11-game win streak as Williams had 20 or more for a wide-open apparent layup, and the pass is turned over. The alley-oop to Williams, denied that time by Wagi, who got back. Sears, blocked that time by Cardwell. The follow-up is put up and in by Reitzel. Tigers have blocked nine of Alabama's shots. Janai Broom getting a long rest. Long rest, exactly. Jones launches a three. Too strong. Nelson with a rebound, and he got banged, but they allow the play to continue. Griffin steps into a three. Got it! <laughs> Alabama basketball at its best. Get a rebound, get it up, get a shot. in the roll to Cardwell. He's got to shoot it. Not his shot. Too strong. Quiet for a moment. Griffin looks at the clock. Foul on Cardwell and that gets the crowd right back into it. It is deafening at Coleman Coliseum right now. Well, except for Auburn, you got to get back in defensive transition and finds will generally overshadow most. Rylan Griffin knocks down his first three of the second half, so he's got 17 points in the game. And Janai Broom now back in the game. He was out for the last seven minutes and 24 seconds. Yeah, he, and he picks up another rebound. He got to have him in the game down the stretch. That's his 10th rebound. Another double double for Broom. But Alabama's been able to do this with their second leading scorer, Aaron Estrada, having a donut in this ball game. Yeah. So here's Broom. He gets it to Katie Johnson. Three way too strong. A rebound for Broom in traffic. And he gets up and he's he's chewing at Loggy underneath. Yeah, you know, and when you think about Auburn too, you know, we were talking to Bruce earlier today, and he's like, you know. Jay and Ravi, we feel like we, we've reached our peak, but the question is, can we sustain this level of play as other teams later in the season start to play a higher level of basketball? And that's going to come with conditioning and attention to detail. Room so got good. it to go, a three-point play. So Opportunity. Man, you do wonder where he was for 7-24. You know, and the referee's getting him away from Wacky, but I'll tell you, the possession before, whatever got him angry, that actually forced him to demand the ball. And I think a lot of times for Janiah Broom, that's going to be the next step in the iteration of his game. Auburn too often goes away from him, and they become overly content with three-point shots and bad shots. He has to start being vocal to demand the rock. Chance to pull them within two. Gets it. Janai Broom having a magical night, 25 points. 
He's trying to double Griffin. Somebody's open. He's open for a three. Comes up short, no follow, and watch out. Here's KD Johnson. Like a roadrunner out there when he gets the ball, he just keeps going. He slowed down and run the set. Broom will launch a three off to the left. Dry Broom is a good three-point shooter. Sears is better, too strong. Johnson the rebound, but will keep it here. They call that on Janai Broom underneath. See, once again, when you take a quick shot like that, you're not utilizing the clock, and you're playing into the tempo that Alabama wants. So I, I get that Auburn can play fast, but in games like this, executing down the stretch by running your sets and being efficient and playing inside out is what their strength is. Rocky after his third point of the night, a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Seven fouls on Alabama, and it's good. Ahmed Wagi, a junior, 6'10", 225. One of the guys that made Oates doesn't question when it comes to his toughness. Loves Wagi Diabate. I actually said Diabate is probably the meanest yeah. guy they have on the team that can really be the enforcer for them when he's on the court. Waggy came out to hedge on that double team. Holloway dribbled by him, and Waggy picks up his third foul. Eighth team foul against Alabama. Auburn has nine. So we'll have a lot of free throws in the last five minutes and 11 seconds. You see, this is where it's going to be the true test for Alabama when there are stops and gaps in the game, and then they're forced to execute in the half court. Right. That's why I say when the Auburn takes a quick shot, it plays into how Alabama wants to play. Aiden Holloway after his first points of the night. Freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, a five-star recruit. And as Bruce Pearl has said about him, there's there's some special in him. Ravi, I got a great note. According to CBB Analytics, Auburn has only played three games this year involving clutch time this season. That means last five minutes, regular season, or o regular time, regulation of OT, yep. the score has been within six minutes. Only three. And all their wins, the double-digit wins. 16 of them, all by double digits. Ireland goes uh, old-school curly kneel to a knee. Globetrotter dribble. And now hands it to Sears, and he'll go with 10. Here's Nelson. They switch with Broom. He's got five. He launches a high arcing three, too strong. Rebound to Griffin. And he lost it. Good hands that time by Baker and Lazara. Forced one up and gets it to go. Tough move by Chad Baker Mazzara. And we are tied with 4-10 to go. Great footwork with the step through by Mazzara. For the lefty to go to his right. Another continued development of his game. Sears against Broom lays it up and in. Challenging the big man. I felt like that's what Sears should have done on the last possession instead of settle for a contested three. Mark Sears has got 20. Oates and Pearl imploring their teams. Yeah. Give him the ball. Corner three, Holloway too strong. And Griffin with another rebound. Island Griffin, six boards to go with his 17 points. Sears calling for that matchup again against Broom. Now Griffin, and he can shoot from anywhere. Behind his back against KD. That ball is ripped, and it's Nelson lays it up. We'll follow it. He will get fouled, and he will shoot two.
This is the Iron Bowl of the basketball. Auburn has made 14 field goals, six more, one more three-pointer. The turnovers have allowed Alabama to come back from a 14-point halftime deficit. Jay Williams, Carl Ravitch, and here's Nelson knocking down the free throw. We saw Auburn right there with two turnovers, and they had seven points off of those Alabama turnovers, whereas the first half, Auburn had nine turnovers, and Bama had 18 points off those turnovers. How many times can I say turnovers? Seven, eight? Nine, nine. <laughs> Missed free throw. Three minutes to go. Three-point lead for Alabama. Trying to set something up for Janai Broom, who's got 25 in this game. Sears right on Lazaro. And he drives to the hole. Nelson came down with the arms. And he's going to get the foul called against him. Nate Oates puts his hands on his head by saying, just go up vertical. You don't have to lean over to block the shot. If you go up vertical, the degree of difficulty is 20. That's a bailout. Those are the kind of possessions that hurt you down the stretch. A near 90% free throw shooter, Chad Baker Mazzara. A huge factor for Bruce Pearl off the bench. He's getting nearly 20 minutes a game. Freshman at Duquesne, then he went to San Diego State. Sixth man of the year, Mountain West. Last year, Northwest Florida State College. They call him Chad Baker, the three-point maker, but not a free-throw maker there. So Alabama takes the ball up two. Probably going to see Auburn start blitzing those ball screens with Sears in it. Stevenson, they're going to get the foul. Nearly a basket. It's on Janai Broom with the body. It's three on number four in blue. I feel like Alabama not just taking ill-advised threes, but actually working the ball down low on the block to Stevenson and putting Janai Broom in a situation where he could get a foul called on, and he did. Jared Stevenson to shoot three. Stevenson to the line to shoot a couple. The first one rattles in. That's our quarterback, Jalen Milrow, who joined us earlier. Enjoying all the excitement here. We had Jalen talking about coming back next year. And excited to play for Alabama and quarterback again. Another free throw miss, Boom the rip. Three-point game. Nate Oates gets the crowd on his feet, using his arms. Williams, difficult shot, gets it to go. How about the improvement in his offensive game? Well, how about the moxie? I mean, he had a donut in the first half, and he's came back and just attacked the rim with reckless abandonment. That's what you want to do with bigger J. Will. Nelson deep against Bloom. Johnson all hands and all over. Griffin in the corner. He will fire it up. And that's off. Nelson, good rip rebound. And he gets fouled by KD Johnson. Really good rebound in traffic by the 6'11 senior Grant Nelson. Not only is he 6'10, but he's super athletic too. Watch him go up and get this rebound. Tough shot there by Griffin, but he just goes up and gets it over the back of Mazzara. And definitely gets hit on the hand. Those offensive rebounds, those are the details and the plays in the game to help you win down the stretch. And he has made four or five from the strike. Five to six. You know, Rob, you could really tell there was a message sent to Nelson yes. from last game to this game. And he received it. Most, I mean, and just playing with energy, yep. right? Double figures for Grant Nelson. Crowd back on its feet with 90 seconds to go, leading by three. Broom.
Can't get it to go. Big miss. They get it in the hands of Sears. Nate Oates calls the play and gets it to Sears. They're going to go with five on the shot clock. Can't allow him to go that way. He drives with the right. No! Nelson with an emphatic follow flush. The lead is five. Katie Johnson absorbs the contact and he will shoot two. Grant Nelson got the message. Well, look, if you're Auburn, if you're going to down the screen, which you're going to send him into the big, you can't allow him to get to the opposite hand. Uh, he rejects the screen and finds a way to the rim, and then Nelson with a strong putback, his second offensive rebound in a row in back-to-back -back plays. We talked about that energy. That's the kind of sense of urgency you need from Grant Nelson. Nelson has a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds. Johnson's free throw is pure. But Robbie, if you're going to down him in the ball screen, that means you can't allow him to reject it. If you're going to send him one way, you have to stay up on his high side and send him towards your big. If you flatten out, he can dance with the ball, and that's where Sears can have it. Katie Johnson's an 80% free throw shooter. Knocks them both down, pulls them within three. See the same set again. It's going to be a high PNR. Again, yeah, if he's on that side, on one side of the floor, you got to keep him there. There's that screen from Nelson. They still have 10 on the shot clock. Griffin lost it. Now six on the shot clock. Got to get up. Got to get up. Sears goes. By Broom. No good. Rebound. And here comes Auburn. Holloway, Mazzara, to got tie fouled. it, he got fouled. got fouled. He got fouled by Nelson, and he will get three shots with 12.6 seconds to go. Wow. Oh, I don't... Well, they just showed the replay in the building, and the crowd didn't see a foul. It, it was more, I, I think they should review that. It was more the, well, they can't review it at this point because they called the foul. Baker Mazzara is three for four tonight from the free throw line. He's got to make all three to tie it. That didn't seem like a foul to me, Robbie. You're going to see it right here. He goes up to contest the shot. He's obviously off balance. But he was on the follow through, barely on the hand. But it was more of a kick out with the left leg. One more to tie. But just to let people know at home, they can't review that and change the call. If it's a foul yeah. on the court, yep. they're going to stand with that call. They bring in a defensive specialist, Denver Jones, does Bruce Pearl. And the freshman, Holloway, to the bench. You're Alabama. If this goes through, you get it and go. I mean, you get it, you hold for one shot. Baker Mazzara to tie it. Oh. No good. Rebound Nelson. Foul Broom. Can we continue with this consistency? This is a heck of a road show that Auburn has put on here in Alabama. And Nate Oates with his 4-1 record. Didn't know if he had guys tough enough to compete when the game was on the line. And they've certainly answered that question. And Nelson at the free throw line, a terrific example of that tonight. As was Griffin with 17 points and Sears with 20. Two shots from Nelson. The first one is good. Auburn has missed six of their last seven three-point field goal attempts. So if Nelson makes this, you do not need a three. You can still get a quick two. 
Somebody has to come back and help the ball, though. 11.8 seconds Who's to go. Who's help the ball? Why is every Auburn player just... Wow. They get it into Williams, and there's a quick foul. So Auburn will go to the free throw line. And Stevenson quickly with a foul on Williams. And Williams will go to the free throw line as an 81% free throw shooter. You see, I, I get the extended possession of the game. I just don't like stopping the clock. Oh, I hear you. Especially on a pass like that where you got Jalen Williams, who's not used to having the ball in his hands that high in the court. Let him make a play to beat you. Stay at home. His first free throws of the night. Too strong. You could tell off his hand, too strong. We're talking about 82 percent free yeah. throw shooter, but this is punch time when it matters the most. Baker Mazzara missed the third of three. And Williams misses the first, knocks down the second to make it a two-point game, and we'll have another quick foul here. Got to by get Auburn. A first. They get it into Sears. There's a double team in the corner, oh. and they do get the foul called. I think it's going to be against either Broom or Johnson. Alabama got lucky, Ravi. Yeah, they trapped him in the corner. And they called a grab. The first thing you learn is a guard, and not a jump ball. Mark Sears can, for all intents and purposes, ice the game by making two free throws. He's only attempted one tonight, but a terrific shooter from the free throw line at 82%. And that looked like a layup off his fingers. I mean, he's been absolutely prolific in the second half. Yes. Uh, the pace of the game, knocking down threes, attacking the rim off switches. Guy up for SEC Player of the Year. Gets that roll, and the lead is four. Holloway drives, lays it up, no good, rebound. Loose ball, out of bounds, clock is at zero. Alabama will win, but they will look to see if there's any time left. They will look to see if there's time left. Well, a lot of Auburn fans on social media are trying to come at me saying, well, it's not a tennis match because this is Auburn. This is Bruce Pearl. Yes, it is Auburn. It is Bruce Pearl. But Alabama has showed up here today, and this is the atmosphere that you want for a team that has a chance to be one of the best teams in the SEC. Three-pointer will not count. Alabama will win it 79-75 in a statement game. And they, they will look at the shot to see, but it was